Hello, so I've been asked to uh, show you how to do the color assignment, uh, set up the InDesign document. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, load up InDesign and after it loads, I'm going to go over here to File and I'm going to set up a new document. So I'm going to go to New and then to Document. All right, this is giving me a new page to work from. Uh, for this class, the majority of the projects, we're going to do 8.5 by 11, which is a standard sheet of paper. To get to that, I go over here to print at the top of my document window, and I go down here to letter, click letter, and then my, my dimensions and, and other uh, details over here. I'm going to title it color assignment. And see my dimensions, 8.5 by 11. Make sure that your units are in inches and not uh, points or picas. Uh, facing pages, I'm going to turn that off because I'm only going to do one page. And uh, for my columns, I'm going to have two columns. The gutter is fine. Um, maybe I'll, I'll go um, 0.125 as my gutter. Two columns. And margins, top and bottom. Margins don't really matter for this one. I'm just going to leave them at that. Bleed doesn't matter. And slug doesn't matter for this. So then I'm going to click create. Right, so I have a basic document right here. The reason why I did two columns is because I'm going to break my page up into four different color units. So I'm going to go to my uh, layout at the top of my page. I'm going to say create guides. And I'm going to change my number of rows to, uh, let's do, let's do two rows. So this will divide my page in half. So now I have four boxes, right? And then within these boxes, I'm going to have three box, three, three rows. Uh, so I'm going to do that separately with um, with a different uh, a different uh, set of guides. So now I'm going to come back up to layout again, and I'm going to go over to ruler guides. Actually, I could do create guides again, but I'm going to go to ruler. Actually, I'm not going to do ruler guides just going to create some boxes. So the first box I'm going to create is going to be my main box for my, my primary color. And then I'm going to create a box right underneath it by lining up my uh, rectangular tool. So I'm going to go do this again. Lining back up, I'm going to create a second box for my secondary color. And the last box will be my tertiary color. And that will go right here. So I have three boxes and three uh, different colors. So if I click on a box, I can change the color of it. I'm going to go over here to my color palette, double click. So my foreground color at the bottom here, I clicked on it. I'm going to choose a different color. So let's say I was choosing royal blue for my color, for my, my secondary color. Click OK. And it fills the box with royal blue. Uh, Click on this box up here. Maybe my main color is a an uh, orangey color. So it's a, like a burnt orange. So I choose burnt orange. So it's kind of. Um, and then for my last color, maybe I choose a lighter blue. So this is my accent color. And I'm going to go down here get a lighter blue and I have my accent color so maybe this is my first color palette uh, what I want to do for these colors if I want to actually get the actual colors I'm going to select the color I'm going to come back up to my color this time I went to the top and right here is the uh, what is the hexadecimal number so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to use that to describe to show what color this is. So I'm going to get my little text box and inside here, if I'm inside my box, it shows up as a, uh, it fills the box with text. I don't want to fill the box with text. I want the text to float above it. So I'm just going to do the box right next to it. And in that box, I'm going to paste the color. So this is my color.
and underneath that this is where I'm gonna put all the information uh, my tint family um, how the colors received orange would be an energetic color so I'd write energetic creates a feeling of oops, feeling of youthfulness and excitement right so uh, your description should be a little bit longer it's just because this is an example I'm just I'm doing it quickly so I have my, my box and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that text box right on top of this one and line it up uh, you always want to make sure that it's off the edge so if you see there's this is called a padding from the edge of my text box to that to the edge of the color box that's padding if it was on the outside it would be a margin uh, so I have my first box and you can re reduce the size of it depending on how much it is in it and then for each of these I might drag this down what I'm doing is I'm holding my alt key and my shift key at the same time and the alt key gives me the double arrow and the shift key keeps it from moving so I just duplicated it and I'm going to duplicate it one more time so hold my alt key gives me the double arrow on my mouse on my uh, cursor on the screen and now I just drag down and I hold down shift because if I don't if I don't hold down shift I could put it off like it is right now but as soon as I hold down shift it locks back into place and I'm able to put that in there as well so now I have my other um, text in there you could do this all in one box if you want to do it all in the main box the main color box for the three colors that's fine or if you want to break it up into three separate boxes that's fine so pretty much I have my my, my general layout done so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag from the corner of my page not actually on the the color boxes but I'm going to drag across the color boxes and select all three boxes plus all three text boxes again what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my alt key so I'm holding my alt key and I'm just going to drag over and I'm place this right next to the other color box so this will be my second color box and I do the same thing for the other two boxes this time I'm going to drag across all all, all six of these and drag down and now I have duplicated that for a second row of boxes so to change the color again this time I'm gonna go over to my swatch library I have some swatches saved already you might not have swatches in there you might just have a few but uh, you can always go and get specific colors this one I'm going for a green I still like that blue uh, let's go in here uh, depending on what uh, what you chose as a as a um, business or institution that you're designing these colors for uh, the that you're designing for that will uh, choose your colors so for that last color I'm gonna I'm gonna go green I'm gonna go with another green but I'm gonna change it up a little bit so uh, let's see so I don't want to change that green. I'm going to go over to this one. If I change this green, it'll change all my values for the green. And I don't want to do that. I just want to change uh, this one particular box. So I'm going to go over to this color palette, the foreground color, or the fill. And I'm going to choose this warm, this warm green right here. So I'm going to click that. And for my last color, so maybe this would be a... Uh, a um, a spa and for my last color let's go with a, another well the light blue works there but what else can I do for a spa maybe I'll, a light tan so I'm gonna go back over here to my color selector Maybe yellow. Yellow is too. Yeah. 
so maybe this is my spa. Um, spas I usually think of uh, cool colors as well, so I might. I think I'm gonna go back to a blue. So I'm gonna go with this blue and um, lighten it up. Try to get it real light, real pale in there. Oops. All right, so those are my colors. And again, to get the color value, I can click on the actual color. So let's click on the box. Um, come up to my options bar up here and double click it. And again, there's that color value that I want. I can copy that. Uh, and I can paste it in here. Um, if you saw, I'm just going to control V to paste that. Um, if you saw in the color box, I'm going to go back up to my options bar. Uh, if you, if you look right here, it says add to CMYK swatch. This is a, a good way to build your swatch library of colors that you like. You can click add to CMYK swatch. Um, another good way to do it is the cooler library. The cooler colors, um, where is that? Uh, that might be a Photoshop thing, but um, Adobe color themes. So this is a way to, to explore some of the color themes that some other people have made. Uh, you can uh, click explore. And I think you can do a search here. So I'm going to type in spa. S-P. Oops. S-P-A. And do a search. Let's see what they other people have come up with spas. So here's a nice botanical. So maybe I, that second color instead of a uh, or the first color instead of that dark green, I go with one of these colors, or maybe a uh, a gray would be nice. So let me click on this, and I'm gonna choose this gray color as my spa. And I'm gonna change this color, second color. So the nice thing about using this uh, Adobe Color Themes is these are a lot of times popular colors, and and these are based based on people's projects that they've done. And you're going to, you know, you'd have to go through these and choose what you thought was best. But maybe this is more of a, a, a modern spa right here with the gray, the light, light blue, and then a darker accent blue for shadows behind text or outlines um, or maybe even some, some, some simple graphics on the page. So this is essentially what you're doing for this project. Afterwards, you're going to go up here to File. Um, save it first. I'll save it to a place. And when you save, you want to make sure that it has a descriptive name. So I'm going to save it to my desktop somewhere. FIU and color assignment. And then what else you need to do is you need to save it as a PDF. So this is the one you're going to turn in. And X1A, this is a nice PDF format for print. If you see right there, print. Uh, so if you're getting this printed, you'd want to do that. Or for our purposes, where you're doing it for screen, you can go Adobe Presets. And I just do small file size, and that's for uh, screens. Um, you don't need to worry about that print right there. It's still, it's, it's not going to be high enough resolution. So I'm just going to screen. A lot of times, your initials are good to put on it. So I put my initials at the end there. And that's my PDF. So smallest file size. Um, this is what I chose. I just leave it at uh, 2001 is fine or 2003, any of those. Um, but I just leave it at uh, none right there. For my marks and bleeds, if I had bleed on this, I'd turn on my bleed marks. And then I'd use my document bleed settings. But for this one, I don't have either of those. So I'm just going to turn those off. So keep it at general. And I'm going to click export. Uh, optimize fast web view. I should keep that on because it's going to be on uh, canvas and you want that to be upload nicely. So click export and overset text. This is for this little box right here. Um, for me, it didn't matter, but for you guys, make sure you don't have any overset text. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to say one more as an XML file. I mean, uh, uh, an IDML file to turn in. And all IDML is. It just allows me to open it in an earlier version because I might not have updated my version. You know, Adobe updates all the time on its own, but I might not have updated it. And you might have a m more recent version, and I won't be able to open it. So by giving me that IDML file, you're allowing me to open it from CS4 on up till CC where we are now. So save that and 
as IDML and those are the files so you can turn that in there's the PDF that I made and this is how you do it so I hope that little tutorial helped um, and you know keep coming to me with questions and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible alright that's it